Hi everyone, my name is Gustavo and welcome back to another Data in the Wild episode hosted by Data Mini. Before we begin, don't forget to subscribe to the channel below and click the bell to turn on notifications to be the first to know every time we upload a new video. Today I'm going to be giving you some tips on how to document your Alteryx workflow, okay? So the first one of them is the colors, okay? So as you can see here, we have all these different comment boxes with different colors. And the reason why I like to do that is the workflow becomes um, nicer to look at and the user knows just by looking at it all the groups of tools that we're using okay so what I would do in this case is I would get each comment box and put in the background of each tool okay and please by any means do not think that this is a requirement these are just some tips that I am giving you and of how I document my workflows, okay? So as you can see here, um, we're talking about a data set, nothing too important, just uh, all the Pokemons and their names. And the second tool that I, the second tip that I wanna give you is the comment boxes, okay? so. If you drag one here on top I am telling you guys to be as brief as you can so do not leave out details of how uh, the configuration is working but try to be uh, very brief when explaining what that tool is doing and you can do that for a single tool or uh, for a group of tools okay so I'm gonna give you those examples and this data set is a list of the Pokemons okay so if I were to um, deselect the number I don't want that anymore okay I'm gonna extend this comment box and what, what I can also do is the select tool gets rid of the feud number. Okay, so this description is enough for the user to know what is going on in this workflow. Okay. So another tip that I want to give you are the containers and this what you're seeing right here is a container and they're very helpful to um, group um, some tools together and what I like to do is I try to group tools together that are um, working through the same process and then I can include just one common box for that container. So if you were to add a container, you would select everything that you want and click on add to new container. All right. So add to new container and you can rename this container. You could say um, cleanse for example and if you were to let's say sort and then do a data cleansing I'm gonna include my comment boxes right here Okay, so 
So if I were to do this, I could add a second container here and explain what is going on for these two tools. And one thing that I like to do is I'll add a comment and I'll say the tools within this container are intended and then I would give a description of why I'm using them okay so this makes the workflow look very organized and um, it's harder for people to go to you as and ask questions all right so the other thing that I want to show you are the wireless connections okay and this is really important because it also helps the user to not feel lost sometimes with a lot of lines within the workflow and this one is a pretty basic one so I wouldn't use wireless connections but let's say I'll add a bunch of select tools right here Okay, so if I were to do this, I would really like to have these tools be wireless. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select them, click with the right button, and click on make incoming connections wireless. Okay, so this is really helpful and it does make uh, you're not breaking any connections okay they're still here so if you click the tool you see very light uh, that it's coming from the data cleansing tool alright so for um, I have this combined two spreadsheets workflow just um, as an idea okay if you had let's say 200 or 300 tools this could be really helpful and the fifth tip we have already covered but I do want to emphasize that because if you try to document every single tool of a workflow depending on a workflow if you have 200 or 300 tools uh, it could become exhausting okay so uh, by any means I don't want the documentation process to be exhausting so I do recommend that you um, explain a group of tools depending on how complex your workflow is okay so the bonus tip here is for those of you who like to keep your workflow different than all the others I'd like to to go here to options okay and you go to user settings and then to edit user settings all right so if we do that you're gonna see a lot of options on um, the background of the canva so as you can see here mine is white and when you add a new container uh, it's usually gray but I set mine to be blue all right so I can also add a grid. I can um, change the connection settings, the color of the lines, and the annot annotation settings, okay? So this is, uh, let me give you an example. If I go to lines and I set to red, and I am gonna add a grid, a black grid. So if I save this, now the lines are red and I have a grid for my Canva. So again, by any means, this is not a requirement. If you do not change your using set, user settings, your Altrox is going to be fine. This is just a way of making the Canva look more like you and a little bit more customized. So that concludes my video today. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions or suggestions for future videos, please comment below. 
Don't forget to subscribe to know when future videos are posted. Thank you for watching.